Hello, 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 everybody. Hope you all are doing well. Welcome back to Tales of the Neon Sea. We failed to fix our friends, so now we're just gonna go out for a walk. Take our little kitty out for a walk. So let's see. Hello, little buddy. And can't I get a moment of peace around here? Okay, William, time to walk. Uh, time for that walk I promised you. I guess we're finally going to go out because we also need to get parts for BBX. Let's go, William. Ooh, finally out in this city and to finally see this world. So all we've been is in the sewers and in our house. Did he just ditch me for a female cat? He was begging me to play with him just a minute ago. I guess gals before pals stands true even for cats. Oh well, I need to visit the repair shop anyway. Who's this little guy? Arnold is my best friend and I made him a kite. But Arnold's grandmother doesn't like me, so I'm not sure whether I'll be able to give him the kite. Oh, maybe we can help with that, if possibly. Can I talk to random people? No, it doesn't seem like. For you. What do you want to chat about? Oh, it's just me. Uh, recent gossip? Do you have any gossip? There is one thing, actually. Maybe you already heard it. Some people are terrified because they saw some strange shadows moving near the entrance of the sewers. But I didn't see anything when I was there. They say that there are paranormal beings there. What do you want to chat about? Excuse me, I had to mute myself because there was something in my throat. That was weird. I didn't give any response to that. That kind of threw me off. Have you decided who you're going to vote for yet? The election since when were you interested in that? Because one of the candidates is a robot this time. I'll be voting for a human either way. I don't think robots stand a chance this time because you, you know who is also running for the election. The way he doesn't say anything after that <laughs> kind of does throw me off a bit. Oh, people do not like robots at all. Can't believe people are still putting up posters like this. When will human and robots be able to put aside their differences? I mean, I'm technically part robot still, or apparently. Hello, would you like a lollipop? Lollipops are my favorite. Uh, no, thank you. Who's this fella? Why is it taking so long? <laughs> His dog's name is Cheese. Are you hurting again, Cheese? Take this painkiller. I promise you. I promise that you'll be released from this body very soon. Oh, are you gonna turn into a robot or just gonna die? Oh, that's right. Yes, the repair shop. That's where we needed to go for some things. Look at this big boy. What's in here? Is that the front? That's strange. Nobody's here. Oh, it's you. I thought it was a customer. I'm not a customer. Old man, do you have any cheap decoders or processors? I'm busy in the back. The second hand stuff is all over there. Go check it out for yourself. So going in the back? What do you mean just right here? Whoa, hold on. These prices are insane. Have you lost your mind? Calm down, I only sell good stuff, and good stuff comes at a price. Even so, everything you see here is at at least 30% cheaper than the market value. It's a bargain, really. And anyway, you should know that it isn't easy to find parts for that antique robot of yours. I don't suppose you can sell them for cheaper. If money is a problem, my offer for you is to become my test subject still stands. I can compensate you with some parts. I can't believe you're still thinking about that. As I said before, there's no way that's happening. <clears throat> All right, then come back when you got the cash. And in the meantime, leave me alone. Whatever. All right, well, we got to get cash from somewhere now. That's our next objective. Oh, look who's back. William, you're back so soon. What have you, what have you got there? William brought over a piece of ripped cloth with blood on it. Whose blood is that? That's strange. Are you hurt again? I don't see any wounds, though. 
The little guy is so anxious. Something must have happened to him. Since I can't do anything else for BBX right now, I should probably follow William and take a look. Okay, I guess I'm gonna follow the cat. So hopefully we can find some money along the way. That'll be very useful. 712. <laughs> Classic place. <laughs> can I talk to you? Nope, I cannot talk. Man, I just ate a pizza, and for some reason I'm very burpy from my pizza. <clears throat> Looks like William wants me to go into the alley with him. Um, sure, well, I'll go there now. Oh. There's lots of buzzing, because I feel like there's probably a dead body here. William, is your girlfriend... Is this your girlfriend, judging from her birds? She seems to be a rare breed. Good choice, William. Did you understand what I said? Wait, is that blood on you? Let me see where you're hurt. Weird, I don't see any wounds. <clears throat> it's in here. Oh, wow. Was yeah, a dead body. Been dead for a while now. Wait, I know this woman. It's Mrs. Perry. She's a landlord at Sephora Apartments. I need to call the police immediately. Hello? I'm calling from the Sephora Apartments. There's a body lying among the trash in the alley. Please send someone quickly. Okay. Yes, thank you. There must be still some evidence here, since not many people come this way. I better take a look before the police arrive. You have entered the crime scene. Carefully investigate every detail as it could be a clue to solving the case. Switch to the investigation view to find traces at the scene. <coughs> Alright, hold E to investigate. Can I just use my mouse for this? Good. <laughs> hmm, this is investigation view? Oh, it's this right here. Am I on it? Ah, oh, there we go. <clears throat> I didn't read that. I went by too fast. Strangely shaped wounds. Liver mortis on arm. Some right here. Left hand middle. I can't read. Left hand middle finger displays a ring mark. Liver mortis on the face disappears when pressure is applied. Liver mortis on arm disappears when pressure is applied. Ah, uh, that's more liver mortis combined. Never more just indicates the time of death is probably more than 24 hours ago. Hmm. Anything else around here? Oh, wait. What was that? On the neck. Uh, skin on the neck exhibits nickel allergy. Let's combine. Traces of jewelry worn on the neck and left finger. Signs of rigor mortis are different from the other areas. So the theft probably happened four to five hours after death. So someone probably found the body and then took the stuff off. Let me see if we can find anything specific here. Uh, we found post-mortem abrasions on the heel formed after rigorous moisture set in. Let's see. Gash possibly formed when hit by something blunt. There's a strange wound caused by impact with something blunt, most likely the cause of death. Uh, dislocation on the wrist with signs of fracture probably caused by falling down or a strong collision after death. Did she fall down here after someone hit her in the head? Uh, Post-mortem abrasion on left elbow formed after rigorous mortis. So there are scratches on the elbow and heel. They seem to have formed after death. The corpse was moved at the time of the theft. First stage autopsy analysis is estimated that the death occurred more than 20 hours ago. The corpse has suffered a fierce collision four hours after death and was dragged here. The theft of the jewelry also happened at this time. Hmm. Anything more I can find out from here? Some marks to stand all the way from the corpse under this dumpster. I'll need to move it to find more. Let's pull out this way. 
Clear traces of dragging on the ground, surrounded by footmarks. Judging from the footmarks, the person was in thin was thin in stature. The marks on the ground continue to in this direction. I should follow them. The dragging starts from here with more traces nearby, and these footprints all seem to belong to the same person. The mark leads all the way to this dumpster. Hey there, little fatty. It's time to wake up. They have such interesting cats here. <laughs> I feel like they spend a lot of time with the cats. He's sleeping too soundly. I need something to distract him. The truck's blocking the way. Do I have anything to distract him? No, but I don't have anything on my persons right now. Hmm. Let's see. What about you guys? You got anything over here? What's this? Some funky food. <laughs> Alright, kitty. Here you go. There's a new dent on the steel lid, which must have been caused by a heavy object falling onto it. Okay, so she fell from here and was dragged over there. The investigation is almost complete. Let's see if we can reconstruct the case. Reconstruct the case? Every clue you find on the case is just like a gear on the watch. Once you have found every clue and correctly combined them, the gears will mesh and you'll discover the truth. When you have collected enough clues, gears, deduce the meaning of them all. Only when all clues, gears, are placed in the correct spots can you solve the case. Uh, so here we got footprints. Hmm. How does this exactly work? I don't quite know for sure. Put this here. Let's put stuff down and then see if we can get it to all work together. No, that doesn't fit there. I feel like that works. Can I make it start somehow? I did it. Good. I got all the gears turning. It's all as simple as that. At about 9 p.m. yesterday, Mrs. Perry fell straight onto the dumpster from above. After leaving this dent on the lid, not long after, a thief appeared and skulked around the corpse for quite some time. He or she hesitated but decided to steal from the body in the end. After that, the corpse was dragged from here to the trash pile and covered with garbage bags. However, the thief did not clean up the traces and marks that were left behind. Judging from the time of death and the time of the thief, as well as the thief's behavior at the crime scene, the thief is unlikely to be the murderer. That person was possibly attracted here by the sound of the fall. The thief committed theft on impulse after seeing the valuables on the deceased. The deceased fell down from her own apartment. I might be able to find out why Mrs. Perry was killed if I investigate the Sephora apartments. Ah, they got police coming in now. <clears throat> Oh, they finally arrived. Right. What are you doing here? I thought you'd be putting your feet up on the new lieutenant's desk of yours. Ah, uh, I never would have guessed that you would be on the one to report the crime. It's been a while. Well, since you're already here, a big shot with time on his hands like you would have figured out who committed the murder by now. Care to enlighten me? Sir, the crime scene is under control. What are your instructions? Carl, come over here. I'd like you to meet the famous Rex. He was on the force too. Hmm, where have I heard that name before? Oh yes, you're regarded as some kind of hero around the station. Although personally, I'm not impressed by what I've read in the history books. Carl! It's okay, Roy. Don't mind him. Rex, tell us what you found. Well, first off, I actually know the deceased. She used to be a friendly face in the neighborhood before her husband died. But as for tonight, this is what has, I believe, happened to her. So I think our next course of action should be to investigate Mrs. Perry's home and the Sephora apartments. I apologize in advance if you feel offended, but I think your reasoning is based on unreliable assumptions. I believe the right thing to do is follow the actual clues, like the stolen jewelry. I'm not interested in your big-time detective nonsense. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to get back to the crime scene. God, oh, his temper gives me a headache sometimes. Rex, shall we, uh, 
Shall we find that apartment now? Huh, you have something against me for some strange reason. Oh, are you... Are you Mr. Rex? My name is Catherine. I'm a big fan of yours. Can you please give me some advice? Uh, some advice. Well, this might not be the best time. Ahem. I'm sorry. I still need to take notes. I'll ask you for advice again later. Hey, Elizabeth. What, why are you here? What's that sound? Are the street cats bullying you? Poor Elizabeth. This child knows the white cat. Maybe she can tell us something. Hello, friend. What's your name? Hello, sir. My name is Alice. Do you know this cat? Of course I know her. She is the prettiest cat of them all, and Mrs. Perry simply adores her. Do you know which apartment Mrs. Perry lives in? I need to visit her. Yes, I do. She lives on number 303, right under my place. Alright, so let's go in and find 303. We've finished our investigations here. Let's leave the rest to Carl and check out the victim's home. Are you ready to go upstairs? Yeah, I'm ready. Alright, let's go. I wonder if it's possible to miss something. Something crucial. Uh, 303. I'm assuming that's third floor, third room. Hmm. Is the elevator working? Something tells me it probably does not. Okay, it works. For some reason, I thought for some reason, it will not work. Miss Barry lives on the third floor. Can you hit the button? Uh, yes. Three. There we go. This is a big elevator. Uh, 303. Oh. We ask people next door, possibly? Um, officer, I didn't do anything wrong, did I? Relax. <laughs> we just need to ask some questions. What did you do yesterday? Did you hear anything unusual while you were home? I slept all day yesterday. I heard the sound of cats and children when I woke up in the afternoon. I thought Mrs. Perry had some children over at her place, so I didn't pay too much attention to it. Relax, we just need to ask some questions. Did you often chat with Mrs. Perry? What else do you know about her? Uh, Mrs. Perry was a loner and she didn't talk to other people much. Uh, she took care of the street cats though and gave them food. The people from the steakhouse in the alley wanted to discuss the matter of the street cats with her, but Mrs. Perry didn't want to talk to them. Thank you, we have all the information we need. Sorry for taking up your time. Um, maybe we can ask 301. Um, excuse me, what happened? We need to ask you some questions. Did you hear anything unusual between 12 p.m. and 11 p.m. yesterday? I uh, went to shopping after having lunch and didn't return until 10 p.m. We don't know what happened. Uh, that's right, I saw a robot in the apartment of 303 when I left home yesterday. I don't know what it was for here for. We need to ask you some questions. I hate it when they. I hate it when dialogue just brings up that first thing, it just doesn't flow right. Um, I was in a relationship with Mrs. Perry. Did she have any friends or enemies? Well, other than some unpleasantries with the steakhouse at the entrance of the alley uh, regarding street cats, Mrs. Perry got along well with most people. She loved entertaining children at her place, and the children loved her. All right, she also hated robots. Thanks, we have all the information we need. Sorry for taking up your time. All right, well, I guess it's time to actually go in and see if we can actually go in as well. This must be Mrs. Perry's place. I'll call a professional to unlock the door. Don't bother. Let me do it. This type of lock design can withstand of drug tampering and force entry. The only way to unlock it is to guide the signal to its target by moving its disc. Hmm. How does this work? Oh, there we go. Um, how do I get the outer ring? Ah, oh, there we go. Move the outside lock. So, is it pretty much just... Oops, I didn't want to move that one. This is just pretty much just matching it all the way through. Like, what's the point of all of this? We gotta turn the inside of the lock. Then turn the outside of the lock. But I don't quite see... Oh, there we go. 
There we go. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Okay, so let's turn the inside. No, we shouldn't have done that. Go back to where we were before. Man, the puzzles are, are interesting. I have to give them that. Ah, not quite. I wonder if I can catch it like mid. No, it like completely stops my controls. Uh, I can't go anywhere that way. Kind of weird. It's like, how am I supposed to... It feels like it would just work out, won't it? <laughs> Alright. Well, let's see. Move the inside. Oh, I feel good about this one. So one more? Or a couple more? Oh, it's not quite matching up. Uh, let me see. What matches up there? That matches up. How can I get myself... Oh wait, I saw it. Let me see it. I'm gonna have to guide my path that way. Alright, I think I actually finally figured it out. Took a little bit of time. Of me just silently sitting here, figuring it out. Uh, there we go! We got it. Yeah, these puzzles are actually a bit challenging. But it's pretty fun. Easy peasy. This half of mechanical and half electronic lock can go to museum now. Wow, she is indeed a cat lover in here. Oh, and there is a robot. Stay where you are. Put your hands in the air. We've got you covered, Rex. Move up and check it out. Just like good, just like the good old days. Hmm. So it seems he's a butler of some sort. Hey, what else can we find out through just the what we can see on the outside? All right, so we found out some hair belongs to the de deceased, wearing a clean, tidy servant uniform, soft artificial fingers, brand new shoes, clear patterns. Is that blood? I think I see blood on the foot. All right, let's check this part out. Uh, the soles of the shoes were stained with Mrs. Perry's blood and was tracked all the way to the sofa. Status code indicator indicates that it has shut down. See, there's some dried blood stains as well. So the hair and blood are confirmed to be Mrs. Perry's, so he's highly likely to be involved. Then judging from the clothes, this robot is an indoor servant worker who paid attention to matters and details. The crest indicates that he was working for a specific family. If we combine all these facts together, let's see. Relax, Roy, he's in hibernation mode. That thing scared me. The hell out of me. I almost shot it. Wait, what's, what's that on the couch? It's blood, Rex. Take a look at this. Did you say blood? There's also some blood on the hands and feet of this robot. But it's un unable to harm humans, so what's with all the blood? Let's check out the couch. There are dried blood stains on the front and back of the couch. These blood stains appear to be an attempt to clean up blood splatter. This is Mrs. Perry's blood. It looks like a full 24 hours since the blood dried up. It's likely that Mrs. Perry was killed at around about 12 o'clock yesterday. Also, judging from the trajectory of the blood splash, it was an upward strike with the swing starting at the low angle. Oh, from some bottom to top. Let's assume this is the primary case crime scene. I'll organize all the information we have so far. Meanwhile, let me know if you find anything else. Hmm, time to look around. Can I go outside? In here? Some wind chimes. Some tea set here. Looks like Mrs. Perry had a visitor before she died. Let's see what other information we can find. Hmm, there are... These look very much like the Disneyland teapots. <laughs> there are fingerprints and lip marks on the Mrs. Perry's and one of the cups. The other cup has marks left by a child? We need to find who this is.
Hmm. Let's see. Complete. What was that? Complete white candle. There's some intricate patterns carved in the bottom, very similar to the wound. Oh. Well, where's the blood on this? There should be another matching candlestick. Oh, there should be. There's... Oh, wait. Someone has hand on it. Miss Perry's fingerprints. Is there still something on here? Oh, wait. Come back. Fingerprints are located on the candlestick from the look of the candle. It's only been used for a short time. Although the pattern on the bottom of the candlestick is similar to the shape of the fatal wound, there's no trace of blood. The murder weapon must be a, another matching candlestick. It's not here at the crime scene, so we can't confirm that right now. We're pretty much done here. Contact Roy to examine the next room. Collecting clues. All right, we're, I don't think we have everything yet. Hey, Roy, we're doing. S we're done with the investigation. Here, let's check the next room. You can continue with the rest of the investigation, Carl. Told me, Carl told me they caught the suspect, so I better take a look. Suspect? Sure. I'll come over when I finish here. Hmm. See, let's look around, see what we can find. Lots of cat photos. <laughs> like, so many. There's something peculiar about this set of cat pettings. There seems to be a hidden switch in them. The hidden switch? Oh. Well, there's one. Two. That's four. Two, four, five. That means there's a hidden third one? Oh no, Miss Perry's schedule. This could be some sort of important clue. So what? Two, four, one, five? Oh, it's not letting me interact with it. Very weird. The scratch is on this thing. Well, that's obviously because of those cats. Can I go back in the other room? Check it out. Pretty sure there were more cat photos in there. Wonder if there's one that's similar. No, wait, something here. Miss Perry's diary. There might be some clues inside, and the key should be inside the house somewhere. All right, so now we gotta find a key. Got this whole place to explore, but I think this is where we're gonna end this part here. So, thank you all so much for watching. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, and until then, I will see you all later. Goodbye.